10 years. Can you believe it? We started Copenhagen Fashion Summit in 2009 when the UN Climate Summit, COP15, came to our city. At that time, sustainability was not on the fashion's agenda. I remember looking at the program for the COP15 and I saw all these industry leaders coming together, but no one from fashion. This was an opportunity. We love fashion because it's fabulous. It's glamorous, it's inspiring. It's design-led and it's full of creative minds. Fashion can be so positive. And it's big business. Fashion industry creates millions of jobs all over the world. Everyone knows that. What wasn't so widely known 10 years ago is that fashion is also one of the world's most resource-intensive industries. And it can be highly polluting to the air, to the rivers, microfibers in the oceans, the soil. And fashion is a major contributor to the CO2 emissions that cause climate change and can be extremely wasteful. Too often, fashion can be both dangerous and destructive. Our goal was to rewrite fashion's story. I want to create a movement. I think we can change the world if we want to. And bring the global fashion industry with us. It starts with people. But first, we have a little definition problem to solve. Sometimes this is almost as complex as global warming. What is it exactly we're talking about here? Sustainability. Sustainable fashion. Your fashion footprint. An all organic collection of casual, sexy clothing. Everyone is desperate to speak the same language. We talk about eco this and ethical that. They have no idea what's going on. I would really like to change the word sustainability into eco innovation. Sustainable fashion is an oxymoron. It's jumbo shrimp. It's terrible beauty. It's down escalator. Resident alien. It's just fashion made in a conscious way. Sustainability, yeah. So what are we going to do? What is our plan? How do we walk the talk? We can all be in this auditorium agreeing with each other and patting each other on the back and that won't really get us anywhere. As brands, we need to make conscious choices throughout the whole value chain. When we create new designs, when we choose the fabrics or when we choose the suppliers and so forth. This is a space with a lot of debate, noise and complexity, but we have an opportunity and an urgency to reframe and to collaborate differently. The marriage of ethics and aesthetics, it can be a reality. Consumers really want radical honesty. They want truth and they want transparency. Like any transformation and change, uh, you start small, you move fast and you try to reach a tipping point. Anything is better than nothing. I really believe that. And I don't think you need to beat yourself up. I think if you just say, hey, you know what, I'll make one pair of non-leather shoes and I'll look into not using a conventional glue. From an environmental impact standard, materials matter the most. Right now, our economy is predominantly linear. We take a material out of the ground, we make something out of it, and at the end of the life of that product, the majority gets thrown away. So let's design things that are good and then let's recirculate them. No one company, organization, or individual can solve this on their own. We need to collaborate. We need to innovate. We need to make firm commitments. And we need to act on them. Together with our strategic partners, we're trying our best to share guidance by setting shared goals with the CEO agenda. And with the Pulse Report, we try to measure progress and also prove the business case. And in the Summit's Innovation Forum, we provide a space for great minds from science and tech and all the sustainable solution providers to meet with our industry. The HIG Index lays out a roadmap for improvement for the entire industry. This is the, probably the most important thing, right? Do something. Just do something. One person can make a difference. And every one of us should try. It begins and ends with you. And there's no excuse. We have the means, the knowledge and the ideas. We can make this happen. But it's never been more timingly urgent to act. Together, we can make it come to life in beautiful, amazing products that is made with respect for people and our planet. I'm an optimist at heart. I'm quite positive. 
we can solve the planet and the fashion industry's biggest issues if we work together. We can do it with dedication, with creativity, and above all, right now, action. Please welcome to the stage, CEO and President of Global Fashion Agenda, Eva Kruse. Excellencies, honored leaders of the fashion industry, I'm so happy that we're gathered here for the 10th anniversary of the Copenhagen Fashion Summit. It's great, it's a celebration, it's a celebrative moment, of course, and a lot has happened, a lot of achievements has been made, but as the film also reflected, this is also a time for remembering that we haven't come far enough and not fast enough. I think everybody in this room is aware that climate changes are happening and that there is an urgency to change. We're meeting planetary boundaries. We have still a lot of problems to solve when it comes to human rights. So for the next decade, we have to put up the pace in order to achieve those. The good thing about it is, though, that all the innovations has emerged. So 10 years ago, when we started this journey, all the great solution providers that actually have found the solution to help your companies move faster into sustainability, they weren't there, but they're, now, they're here now. And over the course of the past 10 years, we've also proven the business case, which I also think is the evidence of how many people we can attract at this event today. So you're roughly 1,300 people in the room right now, representing 450 different companies, NGOs, and organizations. That's quite amazing. You're coming from 48 countries in the world. But what I think is even more evident in terms of that this is a theme that has, is catching on with the industry is that we have a waiting list for 800 more people who wanted to be here today but you're the chosen few, so now it's on you. I think of the future as positive. I really believe that we have so many opportunities to act if we do it together and if we act urgently. But it is on us. It's on us as an industry to drive this change. We cannot expect consumers to drive this movement going forward. We're not going to see the consumers stand, stamping their feet in the stores, demanding sustainable fashion, because we buy fashion is not a rational choice. It's an emotional choice. We buy things we love. So it's down to product first. And that's up to you guys. Make the beautiful, attractive, alternative choice. I'm sure consumers will honor that. We've carved out a new target group and fortunately, I think around 100 of you in this room are creatives, creative designers, product designers, and product innovators, and creative directors. For, for a long time, we've been talking about sustainability with the CFOs, the CEOs, the business case, bringing it into the boardroom. But at the end of the day, it's down to the product, right? So as part of this new equation is that we're trying to attract also the creatives. So please welcome them. Get them a good hand into this world. We've also, in our innovation forum, that I really hope you will visit, um, created a new space in the lower grounds called the Design Studio. It's, it's a journey into inspiring also more creative people into this world of sustainability, and I really hope you want to visit that. And just one mention, again, also on the Design Studio and the Innovation Forum. We want this summit to be dynamic. And there's a lot of conversations and a lot of panels and talks. If the topic isn't yours, go out. I mean, please be gentle to each other. Step out and, excuse me, excuse me, get out. We don't want you to sit put if it isn't your theme or if you really want to stretch your legs and, and meet some of the great many innovators that are out there. We've already pre-booked 600 meetings for some of all of you and some of the exhibitors out there, but they are the key 
and they are the ones who can actually help you unlock your sustainability journey. So let's take all of these great visions and be inspired, but also put it into action and do something. And that's what our good friend last year, Simon Collins, said. He said, just do something. And that is an important message to bring forward. Um, that's why we invited him back. So I'm very pleased um, to invite the next speaker on stage, and that is uh, Simon Collins. Morning, everybody. Wow, what an incredible woman, Eva. You're incredible. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, as Eva said, I have a couple of ideas last year about what people should do. Uh, and this year, I thought I'd share a few more. Uh, there's some slides coming up, which you will enjoy. Uh, my name is Simon Collins. My uh, handle is SimonCollins08. Uh, people like to tell me what I should do. So if you want to tell me what I should do, that's how you get hold of me. Uh, so I'm going to share some ideas on what I think you should do this year. Look at that. Oh, there we go. Um, can we go back? Thank you. Right, the, king, the, the famous writer in the 20th century, Sir Kingsley Amis, uh, he was a writer and a, and a poet. He wrote a wonderful story, and at one point he commented in that story, when you're married, you can be one of two things. You can either be right or you can be happy. You can't be both. Now, I know this firsthand. I'm sure many of you also know this. You can be right or you can be happy. Now, I think the same is true in a lot of arguments. In fact, I think the same is true for me in the world of sustainability. I know I'm right. I know all of you are right. I know we have to be more sustainable. But I'm not happy. We're not winning. We're not winning. We're losing. Every time there's more landfill, every time there's a terrible accident, we're not winning. So I want to be happy. I want little children to run through fields of daisies in 50 years' time and not have a black cloud above them or not have some terrible production facility where people aren't being looked after. I want that all to be an unpleasant moment in history that they think back about. So I want to be happy. I'm not worried about whether people think I'm right. Uh, in order to achieve that, we have to do something, and I need your help for this. Uh, so some of you may remember last year I asked you to help me out. I'm going to ask you again. So, uh, Your Royal Highness, Excellencies, would you please help me by standing up, everybody? I know you've all got comfy, but please, everyone in the room, stand up. Now, turn around and make eye contact with someone that you don't know. Doesn't matter who it is, just look around, find someone that you don't know. Don't speak, no, 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 just make eye contact. Give them a big smile, look them in the eye, give them your biggest, most open smile, and then hold out your finger and say, you are wrong. <laughs> You're wrong, I don't agree with you. Now, didn't that feel good? Wasn't that good? Wasn't that liberating? Okay, thank you, you can all sit down now. You see, we're not gonna win the argument by just standing there and being nice and saying, oh, well, no, but I'm right, I've got the facts. I know the facts. Remember, we've got alternative facts now, so unfortunately, facts don't win the argument. So uh, you've got to learn to get involved with people. You've got to get stuck in. You've got to say you are wrong. This is my sign for the next slide. Do you like that? Don't argue with stupid people. It's a waste of time. See, being stupid is a bit like being dead. You don't know anything about it. It's all the people around you that suffer. Which is true if you think about it. There's just no point in arguing with stupid people. So don't waste your time. But you do have to get stuck in. Because you might be in an argument, and you're not convincing the person you're arguing with, but you are convincing everybody else. And also, they respect the fact that you got stuck in. Like I learned when I was a kid, sometimes you just have to jump in. Just get stuck in. Because we won't win if we don't get stuck in. When little Johnny Spartan from the Spartans used to go off to war hundreds of thousands of years ago, whenever it was, his mum would say, look, little Johnny, you're going to war. It's going to be rough. Here's your shield. Take it with you. When you come back, you better be with that shield or on it. You understand what I mean by that, right? Little Johnny Spartan going off to war with your shield or on it. Well, that's what we've got to be with our sustainability argument. We can't lose. 
We can't lose. We've seen what happens in some countries right now when the wrong side win, right? And it's not good. It's not pretty. Where I live, it's not so good right now. It'll get better, but it's not great. It's not great in the UK. It's not great in Brazil. There's a few countries. So you've got to win. You've got to be with your shield or on it. You can't afford not to be. And then finally, I want to leave you with this. You're going to get stuck into arguments. You're going to be happy, even if people don't think you're right, because you're going to win the arguments. Because the fact is, you're going to win for good. You're fighting on behalf of good. And it's tough, but it's okay. You're going to get stuck into arguments. People are not going to like it. You're not going to convince everybody, but you're still going to do it. You're still going to get stuck in, because you know that you have to win for good. And so that's my message this year. Uh, let me know what you think. These are the, you can take your phone out and take a picture of that now if you like. This is the moment. Uh, you've, got to be, you've got to be happy. Don't worry about being right. Don't worry about the facts. No one believes facts anymore anyway. You've got to be happy. You've got to win. You've got to get stuck in. You've got to tell people you're wrong. You're wrong. And you've got to mean it. You, it's not nice sometimes, but you've got to get stuck in. Stupid is dead. Don't argue with, with stupid people. It's pointless. You've got to be with your shield or on it. There's no way you can fail, all right? You can't fail. Don't come back here and say, oh, I tried really hard, but, you know, didn't really. It doesn't matter. With your shield or on it. And finally, you've got to win for good. So have a wonderful conference. I look forward to seeing all of you around. Uh, thank you very much.